Welcome back to Vegas Live with Ninon, and I'm just so honored to sit here and to interview um, Kevin Dorsey. Um, it's a name that's quite well known out there, in fact, very well known out there. And you are just quiet and like nothing has happened, and you've had that's, the most amazing life. Well, you know, I've been blessed. Uh, Quincy Jones brought me here in 1984. Quincy Jones is quite a character, isn't he? Yes, he this is. This man, he also he also founded L.B. Shaw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. L. B. Shaw was singing a particular song, and, mm -hmm. and, and Quincy said, that's it. Yeah. And so he did the same for you. Well, you know, I auditioned for Q along with, I forget, they said something like 7,000 people from around the world for four positions. Were you nervous? And, uh, no, no. You were? Because you're not that nervous type, no, are you? No, I'm not. And no. uh, he ended up putting together uh, a group uh, called Deco with myself, Saida Garrett, uh, David Swanson, and Daryl Finnessy. And uh, what was the first project? And these were all unknowns? Yes. yes. None of these people were known. They were just chosen as of the talents. Yes. And, they, and, and also being put together to mm -hmm. be able to be one. Yes, and, and everyone has gone on to do their own thing. Yeah. I mean, Saida Garrett, most uh, noted for co-writing and singing uh, Man in the Mirror with Michael. Oh, man, Michael Jackson. Yes. And, yeah. uh, uh, well, our first project for Q was a film called The Color Purple. Color Purple? Oh, mm -hmm. my. That was the most amazing film. And uh, it's been... Was that your first film? Yes. Yes. Well, my actual first film uh, was when I was still in school at Morehouse College in Atlanta. And uh, there was a film called For Us, The Living, the story of Medgar Evers. Oh, wow. And uh, that was my first feature, Did you, you want to go into the acting business and into, because you're a lot in the music business. I mean, you're yeah, one of no, the biggest producers out there. No acting for me. No uh, acting. Every, every, every blue moon, someone gets me to, to no. be in a scene. Oh, well, he's there. saying no acting. Now, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to elaborate on mm -hmm. that a little bit because mm -hmm. you've got a voice that comes out. What is yes. this? You were in a particular movie and they wanted, you, you were doing some, some, tell me the story. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you're speaking of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, yes. Uh, we were in the large choir that uh, does things with the orchestra. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ira Newborn, who was the composer on that gig, asked me to say a few things. And I eventually said, yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> going to say yes or I'm be I, out. <laughs> you know, and I, so I had to say, the sun, beautiful, more beautiful, and then laugh, ha, ha, ha. But I guess the biggest thing, naturally, was when I had to say, oh, yeah. And the, this this line is absolutely amazing, very, very famous. Did, I mean, when you said that, you probably didn't realize how famous that would become. You know, I didn't, I mean, and I, I have to always give kudos uh, to the group that did the song originally, uh, a group called Yellow, out of Germany, mm. you know, and I always have to... Always make sure that I that say you mention, that. That you mention them. Yeah, because, because I, you know, I mean, that's, I, they created that. that yes, you know, they did. I just happened to come in on the tail end because Ira felt that it needed a little oomph, if you will. So he wanted a little yeah. bit of excitement and, in it. And so it seems like my oomph. He had the oomph. He had, over, he had that voice. You know, you so. You had the voice. So it's been great. Yeah, yeah. And, but also now you have done or been with Michael Jackson a lot of your life. I uh, was uh, Michael's assistant musical director and vocal director. Um, I mean, I've that, that had to be amazing, I mean, looking back and thinking of all this, all what you did with, because yeah. he was such a creative power. A creative power and a true perfectionist. Yeah, that I heard, that he... he uh, and just an amazing person, and probably the most misunderstood person that I that I why, ever knew. Why, why, why was he misunderstood? What, to your vision of what you saw, and why? Because when you are Michael Jackson, it is so difficult for people to get to know you, know you. 
Well, yeah, because you can't really, you can't go out yeah, in the crowd. Yeah. You can't really be there. Exactly. And then you know you're either waving or signing or you know. And, and, and so when people never get to know you. If when people don't get to know you, naturally they say you know, things. Get their own opinion of yeah. you, and next thing this is that, next thing this is that, and suddenly you know you have wings and you're flying around the neighborhood. <laughs> You know, I love that always, explanation you know, because they'll put any, they'll stamp yes, anything on you. Yes, if, yes, you know, they will. They, and one of the most beautiful people that I've yeah. known in in my life, yeah. you know, who is truly, truly, uh, not to coin one of his songs, gone too soon. Yeah. Um, well, I, I absolutely like, like Whitney Houston. The same thing. Yeah, I, did you ever get to walk with Whitney? Houston? Yeah, I did. Oh, I wanna dance with somebody. All that stuff, yeah. Did you do all that? Mm -hmm. Oh, love just got shivers yeah. all the way through yeah, me. I, now, when you were doing that, and you're sort of listening to this incredible song, and how are you feeling? How do you, I mean, with this woman in front of you, or where she well, was? Well, I was feeling, because that was her first, you know, big hit. And yes. I, at the same time, when you asked me how was I feeling, I was in the studio also with another young lady who I'll call her young. She was the queen. And we were doing Pink Cadillac and I'm going riding on the freeway with Aretha. You know? Aretha Franklin. Yes. You know, so I, these I, are all the famous people that's, that you've been with and that you've um, been behind the scenes with. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't kind of affected you at all. No. You're, 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 it, it, for, for you, it's like just natural life and you do what you're going to do and everything else. What impression did all this leave on you as to all, with all, I mean, you were actually with all the top talent. Yes. I mean, they, see, like I said, Aretha Whitney, Michael, Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, Rod Stewart, um, my God, Lionel Richie, Ray Charles. All of them. Um, they're, they're such. They've got such beautiful. Uh, are their voices? Because you had that contact. Are their voices really natural? Very, they seem like they're very natural singers. There's nothing sort of. I was blessed, and that's one thing because, like I say, Ella Fitzgerald. I yeah. mean, it goes, and oh, so no, many no, no, of no. those were through Q, and uh, and then you know you get the new ones. You get Neo. You and all these, all the younger guys, and. These, I came in and worked with true legends. They are. And some were, some still are. When you yes, and when you and when you think about that, I mean, it makes it difficult sometimes, which to work because everything now is well, it's all push computers a, push now. Push a button and do this yes, and do yes, that. But and you didn't have that. You had the no. actual instruments. That you had the natural everything. We used to say you you got to get out and get out. Yeah, <laughs> get out or get out. Do get it out. or don't do it. But when you get at that level, you wouldn't be there if you couldn't do. How did you get? How do you believe um, in in your short life? Because mm -hmm. you don't look that old. How do you believe that your what was your gift, or how did you get to to work with all these people? What what was your what was your little secret? <laughs> He's got a secret. Well, you, in in Hollywood and in entertainment, I mean, you you're only as good as your last gig. You know, that's like a horse race. You know, you you, you get a winner. Yes, yes. <laughs> Almost the next you know, one. <laughs> or 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 you're being chased by the glue truck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's how that goes, but I but mean. But you didn't have that. You just continued. You, you. It, it was word of mouth. Is it your respect for it's, music it's, and people? It's word of mouth. It's word of your talent. It's word of what, my God, he did this on this one and that one. I, I got to have him on my project. And then you're blessed because once people hear you, yeah, they're just like, wow. They, they never forget you. I mean, so I'd have a day with Dolly Parton. The next day, you know, with Aretha, you know, next day. Two completely Lyle, different singers, Lyle too. I love it. Next night, I'm in the Hollywood Bowl, you know, and we're doing uh, Nightmare Before Christmas live. You know, so, I mean, it's, uh, I'm blessed. Yeah, but you, 
I, I believe you're definitely blessed, of course, but you also worked for that. Your, your work yes. eth ethics were there. Yes. In other words, when you went to do what you had to do, you did it 100%, if not more. Yes. And, and it, that's what it takes. Um, do the younger generation or the generation of today, do, do they believe that or do they think they can just do it on a wing? You know, it's so difficult. I was raised that when you, in doing a song, it's like an audio portrait. Your words and your, your lyrics and your melody are your paints. Yeah, same thing as you know, stroking it this way, and pitching it that way. Whenever I get a chance to, I remember I did, uh, I was working with Kanye West. Oh my goodness. And uh, they, they are always amazed when the veterans, if you will, come in and work. I mean, it just... Because you know it. How do you... How do, how do you, how do you know put, to put this hair yeah, and to yeah, put yeah. that there and, and to bring this in here? And it is true. How do you know it? Because it's, this is something you're probably born with, mm -hmm. but it's also something you've practiced also. Mm -hmm. And you, you are something like a, a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. and, and you won't you won't stop, like the girls were talking, yes, exactly. you won't stop and, until, until it's right. right. Yeah. And you know, and that's... Uh, I'm so used to, I come up during the time of, okay, you're in the studio until... If I have to fall asleep on the couch and wake up to get it done, that's what I do. You, uh, and they don't have that same drive yeah. and that and that and that same push. I mean And that's why we don't have the same sort of music yeah, out right it, now. It takes hard work to be great. Yeah, it does. And, and it doesn't matter. You know, everybody tells me I say, Oh, he's so lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I tell people, I mean and I don't have to tell you the days of the 25, 30, 35 year music careers do not exist anymore. No, no. Because first of all, they don't have their ident musical identities, which is something, uh, no. and, and later on, I know you'll be interviewing the Funky Divas, and one thing that I always tell them is there's nothing more important than your musical identity. Absolutely. Because back in the day, you could have the Temptations and the Four Tops, but you knew just as soon as you heard them, there was a difference. Big difference. Today on the radio, you can sit there, everybody sounds the same. They do. That musical identity it's doesn't exist. So you've got this new group mm -hmm. coming on, the Funky Divas. is mm -hmm. four young ladies, and each one's more beautiful <laughs> than the next. <laughs> They're amazing. Mm -hmm. They're going to be coming on. Mm -hmm. and. So you've taken on this group. So you you you're from the old school, mm -hmm. and now you're with the new school. Yes. But you see something about them mm -hmm. that is kind of from the old school. Is yes. that is this why you took them on? Yes. You know, and there's nothing like leaving uh, a little bit of you into the present. You and know. That's what uh, you're doing. Yes. You're bringing. You're yeah. not bringing you back because you never left. Exactly. You, you can't come back to something you never <laughs> left yeah, it. Yeah. So you've never left it, but you've taken on this group. Mm -hmm. And does this remind you a little bit of the kind of the Michael Jackson days and all those different? Did yeah. you ever work with Purple? With Prince. Um, uh, I never, never worked with him. No. Never worked with him. Knew him. Yeah. But uh, they never. say he was also a great guy. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to go bowling and all that kind of good stuff together. But uh, he had his own idea and his own way of music. He uh, once again was a genius. Yeah, yeah. He, you he know, was. and uh, people used to always, for whatever reason, they didn't think he and Michael got along. And but apparently we, they we, did. We would go to their concert. They came to ours, and he and Michael would stay up and talk until seven, eight the next morning, yeah, yeah. you know, and so Well, that's the, the, the concept of what people think of, that they, they just mm -hmm. say hello to you and get an autograph, and then yes. they bring up all these crazy stories, mm -hmm. which, which are not mm -hmm. true. Exactly. But when you're in your position, when you're actually with them, or you know the true stories and everything. But the thing of it is, people, unfortunately, the facades and the untruth are more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, make up then, a story and see how then, far it goes. Then the, you <laughs> no. know, then, the, then, then reality. That's you right. Know, because yeah. you know they, and that's that was the sad thing about Mike. I mean, so much of his good would would never be heard of. 
you know, no. because that, Unless that wasn't people like yeah, you, though. that wasn't good news. No, but you know? people like you that come along and, and, and start saying a few things because mm -hmm. you knew him so well. You were with him, Ollie. Yeah. You traveled with him and you were with him for mm -hmm. many years and all that. Um, for our younger generation, I always like to do this. Mm -hmm. What advice would you like to give to the um, younger generation in the music business? That uh, First of all, please, please, please learn to read music. Okay, that that's a will, good one. <laughs> that will take you so much further. So many of us are blessed to have the uh, good ear and yeah. can play by ear and do all these kind of things, but when you take it further... The nitty-gritty. And, and educate yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, it's like a job. You will work more. Yeah. You will find yourself... I mean, there's nothing like classical, jazz, R&B, pop, and it all goes together. And it goes together. But yeah. when you can find yourself doing those gigs yeah. and not being pigeonholed. Because you, know, you can't read because music. Because they're just like, oh. Or, you know, unfortunately, hmm, I know you can do R&B, you know. No, but I can leave here and, and do country and do pop. Uh -huh. I, my God, I remember when they said I was the first black, if you will, to do metal. When I did uh, the Mo the Motley Crew, you know, the Theater of Pain. How did you feel when when that kind of name was stamped on you? I laughed because I but mean, you did. <laughs> well, you know, they had the I mean, the magazines were there. Yeah. You know, and they said, "How does it feel?" Well, how does what feel? Yeah. <laughs> it's music. It's, it's the same you as know? it was yeah. that you know? one and this one, yeah. and it's going to be the same in the next one. It's That's all music. It, you yeah. Know. yeah. So, yeah. you know, but but getting back. Uh, Educate yourselves when it comes to music. Uh, do your due diligence on the past of music. Study the past because all that will do is keep you strong in the future. And also having the knowledge yes. so that you know what you're doing, you know where yes. you're going, and then you, when you have that knowledge and somebody brings up a name or brings up something, mm -hmm. you can actually answer them. Exactly. And you've got the knowledge. Then they do know that you are into music, that yes. you have started it and exactly. done it the right way. Yes. Yes. And then you've got a better opportunity of getting hired and going further forward. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. Very much I, so. I love it. Yes. I think it's wonderful. Yes. Well, Kevin Dorsey has sort of taken the winds out of my sail, that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Um, I, I love to interview people that have had such great careers. Thank um, you. But are still very humble and still sort of, you know, still trying to help as he's trying to help the Funky Divas. Mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely amazing. Yes, I think yes, it's wonderful. Yes. Um, on that, we're going to be interviewing them in a little bit. <laughs> You're going to see the group he has taken on. It's absolutely amazing. We shall be right back. Don't forget to go to YouTube and subscribe and uh, take notice of what we're doing. We are actually giving the um, entertainment people out there a platform um, to understand where the music industry is. Also other businesses, we interview people as well. So anybody who, who in the music industry or entertainment business, come on the show and we can give you a platform so we know who you are, what you are, and what you do. Kevin, thank you so much. Thank Amazing, you so guys. Very much and thank for you. We'll be me. right back. Thank you. If you enjoyed the last show we just did and all the other shows, don't forget to subscribe Vegas Live with Nino on YouTube. We've got plenty more coming up, and our guests are amazing. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nino.